Hello Colour Side family and a Cup of Change family. We have two different families joining in us today. So that for those of you who are, who are on the Cup of Change journey, Margaret has been going through all of the different um, uh, gifts, fruits of the Spirit. And so here we find the videos to match the fruits that she's been through. Um, and for those of you who are not, this is a really simple, easy, creative video for you, for the Colour Side family, um, to look at different art techniques of expressing the fruits of the Spirit. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in total, the videos. Um, we've already posted one, two, three, four. I'm having the count on the fly because I decided to tell you that. Um, but this one is actually the one that we missed right at the beginning. So I didn't manage to show um, the first uh, video because she started without me, but that's okay. But we're doing love and this is what we'll be doing today. So we'll be making this cute little um, page for our Bible or for our journal. I've done this in my journal so that I can show you. So I'll be going through the technique today. But first I wanted to talk a little bit about love and what my inspiration was for this video and so or for this drawing. And so I, um, I have two beautiful boys um, who are loud and lively and who love life with all that they are. And one of the things that strikes me about the way that they love one another is that they love each other with everything. So they can bound into rooms and they collide and they, they fall all over each other and when they're sitting they're like a tangle of legs and arms and when they do playing they play with their whole physical being and they, they're in there and they're expressive with their words and it occurs to me that when we talk about love we often have a very cerebral um, idea, it's all in our heads. Love is kind of a, a head or an emotional thing. But there's a real physicality to loving someone. There's a real practical nature to actually loving another person. And when I see my boys together and they love one another and they, they love each other and they fight and they have fun and they play, it's everything. It's not just showing up a little bit, it's all of it. It's their entire physical being. And it just kind of spreads and is infectious. And so if you're caught in the middle of that, which a number of uncles and aunties have been, you feel all of that joy that spreads for them. And I think to myself, when I look at people, when we say we love somebody, what we're often saying is I have this emotional feeling towards you, or I've made a choice to love you. And those two things are correct, absolutely. There are emotional parts and there is a choice element to the word love. But in addition to that, we don't often talk about the physical expressions and, and that it takes all of who we are, not just uh, emotional response, which is one way, and not just a choice that we make, which is another way, but it takes not just our head and our heart, but it also takes our spirituality, our physicality. There are times when we have to make sacrifice. And so I had this picture, which I actually loved, of this box kind of exploding with love, just kind of trickling out the, the heart being the symbol of love. And I realized that when we talk about Romans 12 verse 10, it says, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor. And it's that idea that it kind of explodes out. If you, I never grew up with a brother, I have two younger sisters. And so I don't know what it's like to have that kind of brotherly, but I imagine what they're saying is, and, and what the text is really saying is family love in Netherlands, we say, that really intimate love that's born, that you have when you are living in each other's pockets and your lives intertwine and you share a bedroom and you share workspaces and you eat together with the same meals and you have all of these things, you grow up in the same space. And maybe, just maybe, when we apply that to other people, that amount of love should flow like you have for your siblings that love that you have that reaches beyond just the the oh yeah like my siblings nice but it goes to something far deeper 
And there are a lot of dysfunctional sibling relationships, that's for sure. And there are a lot of dysfunction that we can talk about. But putting that aside and looking at it as an ideal kind of thing, can you think of, can you stand to love someone as you would love them if they were born in your same house or they were adopted into your family and you had to share meals with them and you had to share toys with them and you had to share resources with them and you had to learn how to coexist side by side and you had to learn what they like and what they don't like and how they like to sleep with 10 blankets on and how they like to wake up and cuddle with mum or dad. Can you love someone in that pure basic form? Can you love them abundantly? And I'm not advocating, of course, of you climbing into other people's beds. Clearly, that's not what I'm saying. But I do wonder, can you love somebody as if they were your sibling in that really genuine way? Can we have that kind of affection for another person where you get to know them intimately? And it's not something you can do with hundreds of people. You know, I can have like an effect, I, I can have like a loving relationship with a few, but psychologists tell us this is an intimate thing. Like this, it happens with like max 10 to 20 people. So can you do that with those 10 to 20 people? Can you love somebody in that way? And maybe it's something that we have to challenge ourselves to, but it certainly was interesting exploring it for this project. And I've probably not said every word I would like to say like perfectly. But I think in some ways that's love, isn't it? That's, you're gonna love me through it and I'm going to love you through it. So the next thing you'll see is my little hands and we're gonna do some drawing today. So I need to find my remote control so I can end this <laughs> and we can hop on to the next bit, which is the drawing. All right. Okay, so we're ready for the handy bit. This is looking at this square here, which is lovely. Um, I've just realised, have I checked? Yes, we're in landscape, wonderful. Um, <laughs> I have to check these things. So, what you need for today is a liner, a fine liner pen, some colours. I have these ones. A pencil, an eraser. I only had the end of a pencil to use as an eraser. A pair of scissors and some fun ribbon with some tape. So those are the things that you need today. And it's a really simple one. I, I loved this picture when I saw it. I really love the expressiveness of the box just kind of exploding outwards with love. And so I freehand, I'm just going to draw very simply uh, my box on this side of the page because I'm that kind of person. So I'm just going to draw a little box freehand. And I want it to have the ability to open this box. So I'm just going to draw it like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I didn't do it this way last time, but I'm going to do it this way this time so I can have the right depth of box, right? So there we go. But before I like make that line any bigger, I'm going to draw now the flap coming out. Is that a bit too big? I don't know. I can never quite tell whether these flaps are a bit too big, but that's okay. So I'm going to draw the flap there. Now, because of the way I've drawn this one, you can't actually see the one underneath. So I'm just going to shade here to let me know that this line should be maybe a bit heavier to indicate that there is something on the other side. Maybe, we'll see. So then this is going to come down just a little bit more strong and here. And I'm going to end with a point here. And of course, if you're not good at drawing a straight line, like don't worry, that's what rulers were made for. You know, don't be, a, don't be afraid to use a ruler to get it the way that you want to or to use a tracing device or something like that. So I have my basic outline of the box now, quite happy with it. And now I want to start adding some exploding hearts because I would like the hearts to kind of sneak up and out of the box. I want them to be like this. I want them to be kind of mishmashed together because they're in a box. So I'm being braver the second time that I do this. As you can see but now I want the box to kind of be a flood of hearts and you can draw hearts any shape doesn't matter you can make them any color of course because why does love have to be mono color I don't think it does I think it comes in the richness and the diversity that we have in the world you know if we look at the the flowers and the animals and the richness that comes from that it's wonderful that you have all these options 
So this is great. So I like this. I'm going to want an extra heart there, I think. Do you think there's enough hearts? I don't know. We'll just... There could be a stray one somewhere. Maybe this one here. I've managed to make those really symmetrical unintentionally. I have a friend who used to tell me that you make everything line up, make it a bit messy. But I obviously can't. So that's the drawing part done. Really easy. And so then what you want to do is you want to colour in your box. Now I have this pencil. Um, if you're in the Netherlands or in a store that has a Hamer, this is where I got this pencil from. It is a gold shiny pencil. I love it for cardboard boxes because if you watch like this, I can use it and it looks pretty much like a cardboard colour, right? It's pretty cool. It looks pretty much cardboardy if you ask me. But when I press down, something magical happens, which I appreciate. So I'm gonna, I'm doing the colouring across because this is the inside of the box. So the inside of the box, I'm doing this way. So I'm colouring kind of left to right, right to left, so that the lines will flow the same way. Because it's not a watercolour, I'm not going to put any extra colours on afterwards. So this is my kind of dirty box colour. I've just realised that there is a line I'm missing here, isn't there? Because it's an inside to the box. Look at that, the things you realise when you're doing this the second time so that's brilliant and then because this is underneath i'm just going to press that much heavier and you see that great gold color that comes out isn't it amazing so i love this and you can be as messy as you want to be because you're kind of doing it so and i learned something about myself when i do this which is great so i love that you have this kind of depth now underneath it's a little bit darker and it has this distinctly gold but I'm just going to make I'm just going to go over this again one more time just to make sure I have the gold colour coming through a little bit because I wanted a gold gift box because I feel like gold is precious and it can be the colour of, of love so I'm now going in between these hearts make sure your pencil is sharpened otherwise it'll be quite difficult to get around the little bits and I'm using this giant pencil because I absolutely love the colour. Because I'm that person who has to have the giant pencil that loves the colour. I think it was something like 50 cents maybe I got it for in the store. Um, it probably wasn't 50 cents to begin with, but it may have been for in the sale. So that's that. Now I want to add the colour of my hearts. I'm going to keep them monocoloured for now because um, it just makes it easier when I'm showing you what I'm doing. So I have this, so now I'm just going around the outside, colouring them on the inside. And I've used, as you can see, I'm using a colouring pen. Now I thought I could use some watercolours to make the colour really pop. But I like the contrast of colouring pen with pencil. I think it's really nice. I think that you get this really nice kind of effect. It gives it depth. If you look on this side, it has this kind of depth because the colours are definitely different so you get the more subdued colour of the of the box but you also get now the bright colour of the the strong kind of vibrancy of colouring pen and that colouring pen can be quite different than say your um, pencils colouring pencils I mean, if you use water colouring pencils, you could do this with acrylics, you know, if you wanted to paint. But I, you know, I love simple techniques that anyone can do that are quick and easy, that allow you the space to meditate on God's word. And, you know, when you're drawing these hearts and you're thinking about, you know, listen, does my love reach that far? Do I love abundantly? Do I love people in the way that, you know, in its perfect form of brotherly love? Or am I as dysfunctional as my own family am i as dysfunctional in my love do i need to assess you know what i see as that standard of love and you know sometimes when we go to the bible we see the examples in the bible and these people are dysfunctional you know there's brothers selling brothers um, and beating them there's you know all sorts of weird and wonderful things happening in scripture and you think well i mean that can't be the definition God is meaning. And it's not. I mean, they're in there because God is loving them through their dysfunction. 
God is actually demonstrating that no matter where you are, he will be loyal, he will be faithful. And your dysfunction does not affect who God is. There's nothing you can do that will separate you from the love of God. Like he will, if you accept his love, he will go beyond. And every one of those stories shows us that. But does that mean that we stay in that dysfunctional love? I think to myself, the answer to that has got to be no way. You've got to hold it up and say, I've got to learn every day to be better, right? I've got to try. So the next thing I wanted to do was I wanted a gold shiny box. So what I did is I got out my, and it's just a gel pen. This is just a glittery gel pen because I love gel pens. I've loved gel pens since I was a little girl. So, you know, my dream idea was always to have a load of gel pens. So this is what's great. And I have this gel pen and I love glitter. So of course that's always wonderful. So someone's coming into my office while I'm filming. Hey, you do. So it's always nice to have visitors. So always good. But I'm just adding some glitter. Oh look, it looks better than the first one I think. Look, check that out, isn't that nice? And then here's a tip. So instead of colouring to the line, which can obviously be quite messy, what I learned to do was put the line on after I've done the work of colouring because then I can just include the mess. I don't have to be perfect. And that, just adding that line afterwards gives it a bit, look at this. Suddenly it looks really kind of pop, look, see, and I should have added that line there. I'm going to add it now so I can see that I didn't do it. And look at this. So we have this wonderful bit where you can go around and it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, if you want to use a ruler, you can. There's no question that that's easy. Test your pens. If you're doing this in your Bible, please test your pens on the back page of your Bible so that you know whether they're going to bleed or not. And here you go. Look at that. So that's come out really wonderful. So now I know you're wondering what this is, but this is genuinely just a bit of ribbon. I don't get anything special, it's just curling ribbon. Um, so really cheap and cheerful. And I just took off um, some, oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, well that's not gone very well, so I'll just cut that bit off. That might be for a different video, Broken Love. <laughs> God restore us. That might be for a different video, but not today. Today's love is about us being challenged to love abundantly. Can I get that one? Yep, I can get to that heart. Don't you love that? I love that you can do that. Right, so I've got the right amount of hearts. And then a bit of double-sided tape, because you know. And this is my technique for doing double-sided tape in this way on ribbon, because I tried it a few different ways when I was trying to stick it down and it just wasn't working. So I decided to do that because look at that. Check that out. That works pretty well, right? And then just snip off the bit that you don't want at the end there. Voila. And then because it's double-sided tape, it sticks nicely. You take off this bit. Bada boom, bada bing. I love that saying, don't you? I have a little heart trim. Now, for those of you who are like, oh, you could have drawn those perfectly there. I could have drawn those perfectly there. But there is no shame in not doing that. So I love curled writing. So I try to curve it. It didn't work as well as I want. So I'm going to try to curve this a bit now. And then see if I can get more of a curve. Because I love... Oh, look at that. That's come out okay, isn't it? Just curved it. Apparently if you test it so you know how much you have to go, you could just draw it with a pencil and then erase it afterwards. And then down here, I'm just gonna add in the text. Of course, if you're doing this in your Bible, you can just highlight the text uh, with a pencil. I always recommend doing it with a like, you know, just a regular coloring pencil. Um, And of course, I don't mind the translation of this one, which says brotherly affection, because in my head, I picture my kids colliding and I love that. But you can also translate this family affection or familial affection, um, because it's not talking about being a boy, of course. It's not gender specific. 
it's talking about the love that siblings have so you can say sibling affection um, it's, it's, it's really embracing the idea um, more than it's embracing the gender as if sisters don't love one another you know um, that doesn't make sense right so sometimes when we hear these verses we hear them gendered and we don't realize what an effect it has on us because um, we think oh we don't you don't realize that after a while hearing all the time that boys are the ones and that it's only speaking to boys that it sounds exclusionary to everyone else you know so that is my text look at that I, t I like that that's come out quite well I think love abundantly love one another with brotherly affection outdo one another in showing honor Romans 12 verse 10 very explosive box I like it love is just escaping and seeping out to everyone god bless you i really hope that you enjoy doing this i've now got this here for you and um i really hope that you enjoy the guide i found this image by the way it's not a, an original i found a, an image i liked online and just remembered it so i've i've done I've replicated it here so god bless have a lovely beautiful day Bye bye